snakes are what we call ectotherms or cold-blooded animals. So as the temperature in their environment increases, they're more active. And um, especially sort of when it's feeding time or when it's not the real uh, heat of the day. So when it's the middle of the day and the sun's really shining, they're probably gonna be under cover because it's gonna be warm enough. But early in the morning or at dusk, Sometimes they get more active, they're looking for heat, they may be looking for prey, looking for a meal. And a lot of times that's when we're active in the summer. If we're bikers or joggers or even just walking in the summer, the warmer months, the, the chances of an interaction increase. So here in the triangle, the only venomous snake we would encounter that's native is the copperhead. Um, they're very beautiful. They have this sort of diamond brown pattern and they have a triangular head. So the triangular head is probably the dead giveaway for a venomous snake in North Carolina. The main thing is to be aware of your surroundings. Dogs that sniff in bushes or um, you know some grasses and things like that, if they surprise a snake and the snake feels threatened, that's the biggest risk of, uh, of a bite encounter. Cats are usually bitten in the paw because of the way cats explore, and dogs are usually bitten in the face, sadly, because of the way they explore. Awesome. Definitely take them right to the vet, yeah. Most of those cases make it with good pain management, fluids, and other supportive care. But if you're a, a human being bitten by a copperhead, you're, you're not going to die. I mean, it would be extremely unusual. Okay, it's gonna be pretty painful. There's gonna be some swelling. I would get to the ER as fast as you can. The good thing is our um, hospitals in the area have antivenin for copperheads and, and other snakes that occur naturally in this state. Best thing to do if you see a snake is just leave it alone. So let's say you're five feet from the snake and you stay five feet from the snake, it's not gonna even care that you're there. When you get into that, let's just say two or three feet from it, then it's thinking, well, is that thing gonna try to eat me? Do I need to defend myself? So if you're gonna be out working in your yard, doing things around, what are some good, just general safety practices then? Yeah, so two things. One, good footwear. And so that means no flip-flops or sandals if you think there could be snakes around. Because most bites to people uh, are probably in the lower leg or the foot. It wouldn't hurt to have some good gloves. So if you're, let's say you're gonna be pulling weeds or raking leaves or clearing brush, having some good thick gloves on would also be uh, a, another layer of protection. We get a lot of queries here on how do I keep snakes out of my yard? The best thing you can do is remove things that attract snakes. So if you have an old pile of logs or a brush pile, corrugated metal, tin, cardboard, plywood, all those things are happy places for snakes. And by clearing that stuff away and even just cutting grass around an area where kids or pets would be would be a really good deterrent. Looking at it from, from the human benefit side of things, so most snakes would be perceived as good helping us. So let's say, let's take uh, black rat snakes um, and corn snakes, and there are some other rat snakes that occur here. They mostly eat rodents. Generally, that's a good thing. People don't like rodents in their house. They can be destructive. Some of the smaller snakes eat insects, you know, and sometimes maybe destructive insects for gardens and things like that. So snakes really help us way more than they hurt us. Thank you.